in this one we're going to discover that we'll end up with a system that has m multiple free variables and we'll see how to deal with this. So as usual we'll attack our system by Gaussian elimination and see what it looks like when we get to echelon form. So as always the first step is to write down the augmented matrix of the system. So the price is going to be 0, 3, negative 6, 6, 4, negative 5, 3, negative 7, 8, negative 5, 8 and 9, just reading on the bottom row, 3, negative 9, 12, negative 9, 6 and 15. Okay, and let's proceed with Gaussian elimination. Okay, first thing, um, we don't have a entry in the top left of our matrix, so the first thing we want to do is to do a row swap uh, to get an entry up into that top corner. So I'm going to swap row 1 with row 2, can't see any particular reason why to do any row over any other, so we'll do that one. Um, so our new matrix is going to be 3, negative 7, 8, negative 5, 8, 9, 0, 3, negative 6, 6, 4, negative 5, and the third row will remain the same. 6 and 15. Now we're going to use that pivot entry to clear anything underneath it. So that will be for us the row operation row 3 becomes row 3 minus row 1. Okay, so the first two rows are going to be left the same. A wee bit of extra writing going on here, but it's alright. Okay, so we're subtracting row 1 from row 3, so that will be a 0. Negative 9 plus 7 will be a negative 2. Um, negative, uh, sorry, what is it going to be? Row 3 minus row 1. Uh, 12 minus 8 is 4. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. Um, 6 minus 8 is negative 2. And 15 minus 9 is 6. Okay. So far so good. Next what we're going to do is we're going to use move down a row. So we've done with column 1. Move to column 2. We see that there is a non-zero entry somewhere in column 2. And there is in fact one in the pivot position. So we're going to use that 3 now to clear away the minus 2 from underneath it. So our row operation will be row 3 becomes row 3 plus 2 thirds row 2. Okay, that will turn the 3 into a 2, and when I add them together, that will give us a 0. So let's write down our new matrix. So row 1 and row 2 are unchanged. And row 3 is having 2 thirds of row 2 added onto it. So that goes a 0 here. Um, 2 thirds of 3 is 2, so that will give us a 0 here. Now we have a 4 plus 2 thirds of negative 6, which is negative 4, so that will be a 0 as well. And negative 4 plus 2 thirds of 6, that's positive 4, so that will also be a 0. And then we have negative 2 plus 2 thirds of 4. Well, it's going to be negative 2. Let's practice our. Um, Arithmetic, negative 2 plus 8 over 3, just to practice, is going to be what? Negative 2 thirds. Just to see how to do that. Positive 2 thirds, in fact. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of long-handed working. It doesn't matter. Okay, and now we're going to have 6. Um, plus two-thirds of negative five. Okay, so that will be 18 over three uh, minus 10 over three, which is going to be eight over three. Okay, um, and at this point in time, this is echelon form. So what can we see? We have pivots here here and here. I should put in this dashed line so we just remember that we're looking at a linear system. 
We don't have any inconsistencies. We don't have a row saying zero equals a number. So our system is consistent. So we have two free variables, which are gonna be x3 and x4. Okay, now we don't want to work from this form here because that will be quite messy. So if we have free variables present and a consistent system, the usual thing to do is to proceed to row echelon form. So free variables present, proceed to reduced row echelon form. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, that means I start from the bottom of my matrix working up, and I want to make sure that I have pivots in all the right places, and they have to be equal to one. Okay, so my first row operation is just going to be to multiply that bottom row by three over two so that I get a one in the right place. So this will be row three becomes three over two, row three. That will turn my pivot into a one. Okay, and this time I'm gonna take a shortcut to save some writing for you guys, spare you watching it for too long. So I'm gonna copy that. And I want to paste. Let's just rub out these red circles and the green ones. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm turning that one into a one and that one into whatever it is. Okay, so three over two times two over three is just equal to one. And three over two times eight over three, well, that's equal to four. Okay, so what I have to do next is I now have to use this pivot to create zeros above it using row operations. So I'm going to operate on both row one and row two. Row one is gonna become row one minus eight, row three. Okay, so I'm using row three as my row that I'm using on the right hand side here of this expression. And I'm gonna use that row on row two as well. So row two will become row two minus four, row three. So we're just thinking this is like Gaussian elimination, but upside down. Okay, so first row, the three doesn't change. But nothing is going to change except for that eight and that nine. So I'm taking away eight row threes, so that will be a zero. And taking away 32 from nine gives us a negative 23. Okay, in row two, first few entries are not gonna be changed. Taking away four row threes, that will be a zero. And negative five minus 16 is going to be negative 21. And then the bottom row, of course, is going to stay the same. Okay, almost there. So the next thing I have to do is to um, turn my pivot in the next row up into a one. Okay, so notice the pivot at the moment is equal to a three. So I'm going to do the row operation. Row two becomes one third row two. So let's see what happens. I'm not going to do it to row one yet, we'll do the clearing above it first. So row one stays the same, three, negative seven, eight, negative five, zero, negative 23, um, zero, one, just dividing everything by three, negative two, two, zero, negative seven, and of course the bottom row. We won't touch that again. All right, now we have to use that pivot to clear away the seven above it. So we'll get row one becomes row one plus seven row two. And that will give us a three here, a zero here. Seven negative twos are negative 14, so that will be a negative six. Positive 14 plus negative five is gonna be a nine. This one doesn't change. And then we have negative 23 um, minus, what do we do? Negative 23 minus 49. Okay, so that will be negative 72. 
the other two rows are the same. We're almost there. And last thing we have to do is just to rescale row one so that its pivot is a one. And then we've hit reduce row echelon form. And in this case, it'll be multiplying by a third. So we get one, zero, negative two, three, zero, negative 24, zero, one, negative two, two, zero, negative seven, zero, 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 one, four. Okay, so this matrix is now in reduced row echelon form. Okay, let's just check the rules. Um, all the pivots are ones, check. Um, we're in echelon form, I've got that staircase structure going down the matrix, and we have zeros above and below each pivot, so we're good. Okay, so free variables. These are the variables that have no pivot, and for us they're x3 and x4, no pivots there. So what we do is we say, let x3 equal s and x4 equal t. That's good. And now we're just going to go through each equation in our matrix and we'll solve that in terms of x3 and x4, i.e. s and t. So the last equation says x5 equals 4. Okay, that's all there is to it. The next equation says x2 minus 2x3 plus 2x4 equals negative 7. Notice it's only free variables that are appearing in our equation in addition to the x to the pivot one. So this becomes x2 is negative 7 plus 2s minus 2t. And last off, the top equation says x1 minus 2x3 plus 3x4 is minus 24, which implies x1 is negative 24 plus 2s minus 3t. Okay, and now we have an expression for all five of our variables in terms of s and t only. So let's just tidy it up to write down our general solution. So I'll write it down first as a set of equations. Okay, so x1 just equals negative 24 plus 2s minus 3t. x2 is negative 7 plus 2s minus 2t, x3, well that's just s, x4 is just t, and x5 is just 4. Also good practice to write it down as a vector equation too. So x1 through x5 just equals negative 24, just pulling out the constant parts, 0, 0, and 4. Now we just take out the dependence on each of those two parameters. So s, there's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 1, there's a 0 and a 0. And then the t's, a bit taller, there's a negative 3, a negative 2, a 0, a 1, and a 0. Okay, so we have two parameters. So we say we have a two parameter family of solutions here. Obviously there are infinitely many of them because we can choose any value of S and T we like and we'll get a valid solution to our equation. So we're done.